One of the best new features of the 7000X is its DME. This new plug-in board set goes beyond the basic features you're used to by adding effects like textured spotlights, intersecting planes, three-dimensional drop shadows on a single channel, and corner pinning. So I've called up an effect here that actually shows several of these particular new features all at once. So what we can see here is spotlighting. Notice as I'm moving the effect, the lights are reacting to where the picture is in three-dimensional space. And if you look carefully, you can also see that I've embedded a texture into the video now, which also reacts to the spotlight. We also now have true intersecting planes, meaning that I can move one channel of video to go pierce another one or operate correctly in 3D space. Move that channel, move that channel in and out. The other feature you're seeing here is a new thing called Art Edge. If I go to the DME menu and come over to Art Edge, I can adjust the width like I would on a normal border, but I can also adjust where the border is. Notice that this border is able to detach itself from the video. I can change what's in the border. You can see here, if you look carefully, you can see the texture also can be put on that border. And I can do these independently on a channel by channel basis. You can see here this one's much further, or maybe I want to attach this one to it. Or I can do them simultaneously. And of course, like most DME effects, I can run this effect that we built as a DME wipe transition. Now, on a DME wipe transition, the video channels are filled by the AB buses on each ME. I can even change the background. Okay, let's change gears and show how we get a three-dimensional looking drop shadow with a feature called Flex Shadow. I'm going to shrink this box down here just a little bit over a plain old blue background. And I'm going to go into the DME menu and I'm going to select Edge followed by Flex Shadow. We'll turn it on and it looks like a regular garden run-of-the-mill shadow. We can adjust horizontal, vertical, I can change my softness, I can change my density, and I can change my size of the shadow. This is a pretty darn good looking shadow just by itself, but we can do something kind of clever with this. We can change the perspective, the axis, and the skew of the shadow to simulate three dimensions. So to help me do this, I'm going to jump down to my in-out menu and turn graphics on. Of course, on here, I can turn on all sorts of different names and graphics to, to help me position my DME and see where my perspective and my axes are. But in this case, I'm just going to keep on flex shadow axis. We jump back over here. And now I'm going to change my axis locate. This just lets me see where I'm working a little easier here. Now I'm going to adjust my vertical perspective, kind of like that. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to adjust my horizontal skew. And lastly, I'm going to change my vertical size. Maybe change the perspective just a tad more and the skew a tad more. And you can see here that we've got a nice looking simulated three-dimensional drop shadow for my box, which will track very nicely as I move it. And come down here and turn the graphic off. Now I can turn around and track it. It looks very nice. Gives a little perspective if I have a box sitting on the screen somewhere. Now let's talk about one of my favorite effects, corner pinning. All right, to demonstrate corner pinning, let's take this picture that we got off of uh, Broadway in New York City. And I'm going to once again use my daughter Kelsey, who's always wanted to go to New York and visit it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use corner pinning to put Kelsey into this left-hand billboard here. So we'll go to the corner pinning menu, which is under DME, nonlinear corner pin. We're going to turn corner pinning on. Now the concept of corner pinning is instead of trying to move the DVE and change its perspective, that I'm simply going to take each corner, just like this, and put it where it needs to go. Now this is a little hard to see, so there is a little helper here called corner marker. I can turn this on and it kind of helps me to put a bullseye, so to speak, on a particular corner. Now I'm going to come to the bottom left, move it up a little bit, move it to the right, and move it down, take the top right, do the same thing over here, take the bottom right, because right now that's not a very flattering picture of my daughter. She'll be very upset at me. Move it over here a little bit. Okay, now we're, we're getting a little closer. Now the other thing I can do is I can use a feature on here called Video Through. It kind of does a half transparency 
If that kind of helps you, you know, there's just tools to help. If you want to use them, great. If you don't, no problem either. So I'm going to turn both these features off, and I'm going to eye this in. So we're going to bring it up here, put it in the corner of the marquee. Here's the top right. Here's the bottom left, about right there. And the bottom right, move it over just a hair. Now, obviously, the perspective on her is not correct. And there's a feature in here called Crop Link, and you can see that it's turned on right now. If I take a shortcut over to Border Crop menu, turn on Cropping, what Crop Link does is it allows me to set my crop, but it's going to automatically expand the picture so that the corner pinning stays. So I can move this this way. Now she's too far over this way, and if I crop to the right, it'll bring it back. Bring it over this way a little bit. And now my daughter's on Broadway. So one other thing I want to show you is a great feature called Zoom Enable. I'm going to put a second channel of DME, and in that channel of DME, I'm going to put the same background of Times Square. I'm going to turn on Zoom Enable on both channels. So now I'm going to use both channels use the Z-ring on my trackball, and you can see that with the Zoom Enable feature, it keeps both channels, which one's the background, the other one is the corner pin, perfectly aligned. 